Okay, once we have our GitHub and Netlify pipeline set up, I think we can definitely start working on our application. And for this, I will gonna minimize it as well as close the sidebar so we have more space to work on. And then I'm gonna show you what we're gonna be doing in the general terms in the beginning. I think since this is not our first rodeo, we are gonna be setting up everything component by component. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, my whole state is going to be sitting here within the app component. And this is where I'm going to have the state. And this is where I'm going to have the methods. And then we're going to be passing this information down to a to do input component, as well as the to do list component. And the way we're going to set up everything is first, I'm going to set up the app component. We will going to set up the structure for the methods, meaning we're not going to write the logic. However, I will going to create the methods and I will going to already pass them down. So the moment when we're going to start working on the to do input, we already have access to all the variables or the methods that we're going to need. So that way I can start implementing this. And as a result, I think then we're going to not have to jump back and forth. So let's say I do something in the app then I need to jump to input then on to do list. I think this is just going to make way more sense. Okay, so let's start here. Let's say that we're going to be looking for the state. And once we'll have a state, we're going to set up items and the items is going to be an array. We technically could leave this as an empty array. However, why don't we right away create it with some objects? And let's say the ID is going to be one. And then the title is going to be I don't know, uh, again, wake up. And what I'm doing right now is just hard coding some values that whenever we are going to set up the list, we're going to have something to show. And let me add here, copy and paste it. Obviously, this is not what I wanted because I copy and pasted the whole line. So let me just select this. Then we're going to, I don't know, copy and paste it, obviously. Somehow, let me select it. Let's say copy. Again, we're going to do copy and paste. And then this is going to be our second item. So ID might be something like this too. And we're going to say make breakfast again. It doesn't really matter how you're hard coding this, because at the end of the day, we're all going to rewrite this eventually once we're going to set up our to do input. OK, so we have the items. What else we're going to be looking for? We're going to be looking for the ID. And let's say here I would like to use the UUID. And the only thing I really need to do is just since we have already imported from our external package, I just need to run it like this and just to show you that this is going to be working, I will going to head over to a render and let's say above the return, let's just console log what we're having right now in a state. And you'll see that every time your application is going to re render, then you're going to be getting a new ID like so. We're going to save it. We're going to look at the inspect and notice in the console what I'm having right now is the object and then I have the ID which is going to be this long, long gibberish number. Then the moment we're going to refresh, notice this is going to be different ID. Then again, we're going to refresh a different ID. So that's the beauty for it. Otherwise, we obviously would manually have to create it, which is not a big deal. But I think it really saves you time since a lot of times we're going to be getting information externally from APIs anyway, where they provide the ID. So I don't think it's necessary to create our own IDs if we can just use this nice, neat little package. Okay. So we have the ID and let me just get rid of this. We're not going to need that like so. And then we're going to be looking for the item. And I'm going to say for now, the item key is just going to be an empty value. And if you remember with controlled inputs, we had something in a state that was actually controlling the input, which was this. So this is what we're doing right now. We're just setting this item in the state. And then we're going to pass it down to a to do input. Okay. Uh, after that, we're going to do edit item, edit item. And obviously, at this pace, I'm not going to tell anything about it. We're just going to create it. I'm going to set this equal to the false. And the moment we're going to be setting up the method and all that, and then we're going to come back and then we're going to talk about it, why this is false in the beginning and what's the whole point for edit item. And that is going to be my state. Now, like I said, I'm also going to create all my methods. And when I say all my methods, I mean, I'm just going to have the structure for them. So I'm going to say, yes, there's going to be handle change. And I will going to be eventually passing the event object. 
And at the moment, we're going to be console logging. And again, we're just going to be console logging, whatever. I can just say hello, or we can just leave it blank. You know what? Let's save time and let's not deal with actually uh, console logging because there's no difference anyway. Uh, we can just create these methods. Or you know what? No, maybe it will going to make sense since we might want to see whether this is going to be working. So console log and let's say handle change. So here I'm just going to add the names of my methods so I see that the correct one is running. Then I'll have a handle submit. So this is obviously going to be run as we're putting the input. Then the handle submit is going to be the one that we're going to be dealing whenever we are going to be submitting the actual form. So the name is going to be sub handle submit. That's going to be my method. Now let me again copy and paste it. And let's say there's going to be another method. Now this method is going to be clear list. So this is going to be whenever we're clicking on a button. And like I said, the first one was as we were adding some kind of item within the input. Then the second one is going to be when we're adding the input. And then clear list is going to be the third one. And for this, we're going to say clear list. We're not going to pass any kind of event. And we're just going to say clear list method. Clear list method or just clear list is going to be fine. Then we're going to have handle edit and handle delete. And both of them are going to be looking for the IDs. Now, as you can see, those are going to be the ones in an item. Because if I want to edit something, I'm going to click on this button. Then if I want to delete it, obviously the item, then we're going to be clicking on the garbage can. Okay, so for this one, let's write handle edit or you know what the first one is going to be delete delete we will going to pass the id because that is very specific of what we're going to be doing so we might as well can do handle and you know what let's create it as a template string i think this is just going to make more sense so handle edit and for now let's just see whether the correct id is going to pop up which by the way is going to be kind of hard to tell anyway meaning that we're going to be getting this uuid it's not there's going to be like id of one or two and when I say hard, it's just going to be we're going to have to do a little bit of work, but it's no big deal. And then we're going to have handle edit again. And this is going to be the same setup. We will going to pass the ID or we're going to be dealing with editing. That is as far as our methods go. And now I would like to pass these methods and first of all, set up a different kind of layout that I have here right now within my actual app component. And like I said, we're going to be dealing with a lot of containers because that is the basic setup in the bootstrap that we're doing. So we're creating this div with the class of container, which is going to serve as our container. Then since we're going to have the row, we would want to also have column or since we're going to be using the column, we're going to be using the row chicken or egg, which comes first. But in this case, the row is obviously going to be first and then we're going to be dealing with the column. And then the column is going to be 10 columns wide. And what I'm saying right now is that Starting from the extra small screen, the column or the div is going to be 10 columns wide, and we have a class of MX Auto. So I'm placing right now this div in the center, as well as the moment we're going to get to the medium screen, which is, I believe, from 768. Then the div is going to be eight columns wide. So these are the classes. And like I said, basically what you're going to have is column medium, column small. So depending on the screen size, you're going to be choosing how many columns your div is having, as well as we're going to add margin top four. And in Bootstrap, what you have is here a classes. So let's say if I would want margin top one is going to be the smallest margin top is going to be zero if there's no margin. And then let's say the five is going to be bigger. So they have this system where they are adding, let's say, a margin top five is going to be 2.5, I believe, REMs. Again, I would need to go and check, but usually what you're doing is you're just setting up some kind of values. So let's say if I would want margin all around, I would say margin like this, like so. And then if I would want margin top, I would do like this. Margin bottom is going to be like this. Then left is obviously L and right is going to be with R. Then the same could work with the padding. Again, L, top, bottom, left, right, and so on and so forth. Again, this is not a bootstrap thing, but I'm just explaining you what these classes are doing. And you can obviously go and do a little bit of more research if you are lost or if you don't understand anything. Okay, so within this column, what are we going to have? We already have all the classes and everything set up for the column. 
and then let's write that there's gonna be heading three and the heading three is gonna be let's say to do input and that's gonna be basically our name. This is what you're having here, and then we're gonna be also working with to do list. So let's say heading three, uh, we're gonna have some class names also. So let's write for this guy class name, and then we're gonna have first of all text capitalized. So this is gonna capitalize our text, capitalize, then we're gonna have text center. So this class is gonna add text in the center, quite self explanatory to do input. And this is gonna be my text. Let me save it just so we can see everything is happening. And obviously, I have the mistake right now because I have to do list and to do item, and I'm rendering not properly. And as well as I would like to get rid of these divs, and now everything should be working like so. So I do have my to do input, but then obviously, I have a bunch of text that's technically messing with our view. But we see that we're having our heading three, and that is really good. And now, what's one left thing that we would want to do is I would want to pass some of the values that we have for the state down to our components. And here I'm just going to be setting up again the props. So I'm going to say item, and this is going to be equal to a this dot state item. This is going to be our item. Then I'm going to be looking for a handle change. That is going to be the method that we're going to be passing, as well as we have the this dot handle change. Obviously, this is going to be our method. Then we're going to have handle submit. And I'll submit. And this is what I was talking about, that I don't see the point for each and every method for us to jump back and forth to create it in the state, then go down into the component. We might as well can set up the structure and then pass them down to a correct component, see whether the actual method is working. And then at the end, we can just do the logic because this is everything we have covered already before. Only thing we're doing is passing down the props. And I already explained kind of what was happening. So item was for the input, then handle change as we're adding something to the input handle submit is once we're going to be submitting the form. So this dot handle submit, that's going to be a value. And then also for editing item, I would like to pass down the item or the key from the state. So I'm going to say edit item, and then I'm going to be looking for this dot state edit item. So these are going to be the values that we're passing down in to do input. And for this guy for the to do list, again, we're going to do a similar way, we're going to say items. So instead of passing the item from the state, we're going to be passing the array that we had in the state. So this dot state items. So this is what we're going to be passing. Then we're going to pass down the clear list prop with the value of you probably guessed it, this dot clear list. We're also going to have another method in the prop handle delete is going to be equal to this dot handle delete as well as let's do handle edit. So handle edit is going to be equal to this dot handle edit. So that would be our setup for the app. Before I let you go, why don't we right away do the setup for the GitHub where we again push the changes. And in this case, maybe let me show you that we technically don't need to press this where we're submitting everything. We could technically just add this one, right? So that would be the changes that we're adding. And then we're going to be saying, okay, so we would want some kind of message. And let's say app component uh, structure, something like this. And then we're going to pass it. And now, as you can see, it's not going to be giving us the error where it's saying, well, you haven't made any commits meaning it wasn't an error. It was more like a warning where it says, OK, you haven't committed everything. Do you want to just commit everything? And yeah, that is exactly what we would want. And then obviously, last but not least, we would push it. And now this is going to be pushing my changes to the GitHub. And we might as well can go ahead to GitHub to take a look whether everything is working. We have the React to-do list. And if I refresh, I should be having my app component structure and obviously, at the moment, everything is being rebuilt on Netlify. Now, I'm not going to head over there because it doesn't really make sense right now since we haven't added anything visually, meaning apart from this heading three. But once we're going to do a little bit more work on components, we might as well can swing back and just take a look whether everything is properly being built on Netlify.